Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. What are we doing here? Why we're going through the end of month submissions for the PMP, the Painters Motivating Painters. Uh, so this month's submission is Army, so we're going to be looking at full armies. Uh, and so that means we're going to be evaluating these differently. We're not looking at the individual models. Instead, we're looking at coherency, the basing, the story they're telling, um, how well they work as an army on the table. So that's the basic concept. Uh, if you want to join the PMP, you can find the link to do so below. Just click on that. You do have to answer all three questions. Once you're a member, we invite all of our members to, if they want, submit one, up to one submission per month into the monthly event, where we then evaluate what's going on uh, based on their feedback. Do please ask for specific feedback. Also, don't write me a novel. Just give me a story of what's going on, very basically, and what you need. Uh, so... With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. We start off with Kenneth here. Um, he's got a Star Wars Legion Force for us. Uh, really nice force. Uh, looks cool. I like Count Dooku in here. Um, it's a good example of what, you know, sort of basic, uh, what really tying everything together with just a basic scheme can do. So I think it looks nice. My best advice overall would be continue to push the contrast a little bit with the various members of the forces as well as you may want to think about your basing scheme is cool but you could still talk you know kind of kick it up a little bit have some things like little tufts or something like that around it whatever the case just make sure there's something to kind of break up all the sand but overall very cool looking force i like it uh okay next up we've got kevin uh and he says um He's interested in getting pointers on the metallic paint theme for the entire force and the vehicular digital camo. Sure. So the I think this looks really nice. I looked over this army. The I think the digital camo looks great, especially with all the weathering over it. I think the Dark Angels, these guys look gritty and like they've been engaged in a force. Good integration of sort of the earth and stuff like that into their forces. You know, dirt on the tires, things like that. So that looks nice. The bases all look really muddy and rusted and thing and, and that sort of thing so all in all this is a great looking force um really cool uh so i i enjoy it i think overall <clears throat> your basing seems really unique it pops out i think the uh the color itself of the marines is interesting going for sort of the green metallic is an interesting choice um you could uh probably still push that up a little more by reintegrating silver and then a lighter green glaze the very highest points to really make those high highlights pop but that's minimal uh overall this is a fantastic looking force it looks great amongst all this terrain so yeah well done okay <clears throat> next up uh this is adam uh and he's bringing us uh, some blood angels i think or some red space marines um, he, he wanted to know about basing and any suggestion that would push the, the models to the next level. So one of the things I noticed is that, you know, with red, you really have to work to pop it up. And it's actually, the contrast is less about the highlights and more about creating deep shadows. So integrating a little bit of blacks or deep purples or deep browns into your reds can be a great way to create shadows. Um, and I think that's probably would be my recommendation. Overall, these guys look really nice. You also may want to pop out some of the edges more. Edge highlighting Space Marines is an age-old tradition. Uh, the As far as the basing goes, I you know, I think it's fine. <laughs> you just probably need to integrate some color. Maybe a little bit of reds and oxidation in the rocks and stuff like that. And I think then you'll be in a better place. You could also bring some dirt up onto the feet of the Space Marines. And that will probably... Uh, further make them a little more visually interesting uh but overall yeah good stuff uh i enjoy it okay next up bill bates uh akshi based gloom spite army uh lava caves and ash and swamps uh sure so very cool force now when we're working mainly in oranges the trick that we've got to do is still make that interesting i noticed a couple of these guys look shiny in the in the group shot and what I and I'm gonna leave it here because I think this is probably one where I can really talk about the story the most. The thing that jumped out at me is on the fleshy parts, we need to come more up into a sort of Caucasian flesh tone. In the orange parts, we need to bring those down a little more into a bit of a brown tone and up a little more into a yellow tone. Um, so that kind of movement, you still they're still gonna appear very orange. 
if 50 to 60 percent of the surface area is still orange in color, but everything else can be can have lots of different colors in it. Um, that with that, and then the black stone is what jumped out at me uh, as not having enough sort of visual interest. The big stone on the trolls in the back, especially our big dank hold boy there, um, there just doesn't isn't enough visual interest going on with that stone. But overall, this is a nice force. Uh, you know, the orange looks really smooth and creamy and bright, which is great. That tells me you used a good color to paint your orange. It's not fighting with like a black undertone or something. So either you put a lot of layers on or you undercoated them smartly. Uh, so I do think that was well. And the orange looks vibrant and natural and realistic. Like they feel like what orange colored trolls would be. So I think that's very effective. Uh, yeah, we just need to push that contrast a little more. But overall, great looking force. I enjoy it. Okay, next up, we have uh, Adax uh, with his Gene Stealer cult army he painted throughout 2020. Uh, pre-shade and glaze technique for most of the army. Appreciate feedback on the color scheme, surface treatment, weathering, and some tips on photography. Well, I don't know that I'm your person to tell you about photography, I'll say that. Um, so, as far as like the pre-shade goes, you picked odd colors to use the pre-shade and glazing because grays are really tough to do that with. But I assume that's mostly for the purples and things like that. Um, I think the army looks really good. Uh, the sort of yellow sand is a great choice to offset against a force with a lot of purples integrated, especially in the more gene steelery uh, people, like the, the ones that are more tyrannity. Um, because, you know, yellow and purple being complementary colors means that that pops out quite well. Um, the dirt and dust on the tires then being brought up and uh, on the bikes and on the vehicles also looks really nice. The patterning and things you did on the vehicles, I really like that as well. I think this is a great example of using that technique in a good way. Everything is well contrasted. You picked out the individual elements really strongly. Um, I like the weathering and stuff like that on the vehicles. I mean, I think this is an overall really, really strong looking force. Uh, I really like these individual vehicles. I think the individual gene stealer guys themselves here, these cultists, look really nice. I don't know what their individual names are. I apologize. But... Um, I think the, the green is also a good choice. It's a very bright, intense kind of fluorescent color that pops out well. Uh, so yeah, my feedback is I think this is great. You may want to, on some of the more big bug models, pick out a little bit more of sort of the carapacy, make that a little more textury. You could do the same thing with some of the orange cloth that's in here. Um, that could, again, that is the only part that felt a little flat to me. It doesn't feel like it's retaining the same contrast that you're getting with a lot of the flesh, a lot of the purples, and that's happening in a lot of the vehicles. So there you go. Hope that helps. Overall, very, very cool looking for us. Uh, something you should be really proud of. Very well done. I love this dude. He's so great looking. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Michael uh, with a smaller force of mainly some vehicle dudes. Uh, which we'll just kind of go through. Uh, yeah, overall, Michael, um, nice. The pictures are a bit yellow and overexposed, but I think you did a nice job making the army look coherent. The use of the red and green is, you know, classic orc stuff, obviously. Again, not, red does make things go faster, but also red and green being, again, naturally complementary colors work pretty well, and you've desaturated the red in a lot of cases with a very desaturated green, so they don't feel, you know, overtly Christmassy or anything like that. Um, the vehicles have a lot of nice dust and dirt and, and things like that on them, so I think that that works out really well. Uh, I think that's solid. And I think overall, uh, this force came together nice. I really like the details here, like these insignias and things on there, the check patterns and stuff like that, the, the racing stripes. All of that looks really, really strong. Uh, so overall, I think this is a really nice force. I think you could go for <clears throat> some even more heavily weathered uh, items here. So bring out some more rust spots, some more streaking, especially on the vehicles. I think that would be my sort of feedback for you uh, overall. Probably if I was going to say here are a couple tricks that can take it to the next level. Um, so a little more carefully placed, specifically scratches, dents, weatherings, chips, and rust streaks would be my item I would go for. That would be my pick. Um, fantastic force, though, overall. Very well done. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, next up, we've got Paul uh, bringing us a Stormcast army he's been working on. Uh, only been in the hobby for a year, but he tried to go as hard as he could for most of these models. Sure, so we have a little bit more of a concept army type scheme here, you know, very focused on individual colors. 
uh, kind of more of like the warrior with the ghost thing. I think this is a perfectly fine play for an army. My recommendation would be you want to keep it a little more consistent. Like some of these guys have a little more green, kind of the nilic oxide colors than others. Um, <clears throat> and when you're doing this kind of scheme, uh, my advice is pick out some of the elements. Like these guys look better than the other ones that look a little more ghosty because they have their individual elements kind of more strongly picked out. And, and that's really the, the challenge that I have when I, when I look at this, is that some of these appear very straightforward and, and very clean and picked out, and some of them appear very much more ghostly. Now, I suspect what you were going for is saying, like, oh, these are the, the evocators and the ballistic things are, like, real people, and the, the um, sequiturs are, like, their summoned soldiers and stuff like that that aren't real, more like ghostly spirits or something. That's fine. You still want to make sure you kind of signal that by having some individual elements picked out on them, defining the individual pieces and parts of the Stormcast, even if it's a statue or meant to be an animated golem or spirit geist or something like that, whatever it's meant to be, um, can still really help. And then having like these guys with some of the green energy work a lot better than the ones that are more flat. So that's kind of where my feedback would be. Overall, cool stuff. Okay, <clears throat> next up, Thomas uh, just batch painted some uh, some Bone Boys and Nagash. Any suggestions on painting the armor? It's supposed to be glossy black enameled paint under a cold light. Uh, sure. So, <clears throat> you know, these guys are a great paint. Really nice force overall. Um, they do need more contrast, especially on the bone. Um, the bone looks rather flat, and it's a lot of this these models. I think that's your biggest opportunity for improvement in here. As I look at the force, like I like that Nagash has the red, but the contrast overall is missing, and it's especially noticeable on the bone. As far as the highlighting on the armor goes, sure, I don't know that it really works as glossy black, and that's mainly because you left your black satin and the highlights are more matte, so you actually kind of have a challenge there in that the wrong things are reflecting the light that you're shining on the models. But the biggest opportunity you've got is in bringing up the bone in these guys and making the actual bone look more interesting, both with deeper shadows and higher highlights, uh, because that makes up so much of the model. <clears throat> and that's the part right now that's kind of flat. So that's my feedback for you there, Thomas. Overall, very cool looking force. It definitely is coherent. I think you did a nice job with it. All right. Uh, okay, Mika, uh, Miklos, sorry. Uh, this is his first army painting project, uh, and he said, if I spent 10% more time on this, what could be the biggest opportunities for improvement? Uh, sure. Hello. There we go. Okay. So, big old, uh, Thousand Suns Force here. So let's take a look. Uh, very nice looking army. Again, Thousand Suns being something that's very, uh, distinct and has you know a really really nice look to it lots of different surfaces lots of different ways to make popping colors bright blues and yellows things like that zinch in general <clears throat> is sort of a one of those options where you can get bright now my biggest issue here is honestly with the tanks the tanks are super boring and aren't doing anything interesting the, the little freehand touches are nice but they should be colored they should have something interesting going on the individual elements and details aren't really picked out they feel like they didn't have the effort put in that's what, if I was going to spend more time on the force, honestly, it would be making those tanks have a color and refining the freehand and stuff like that and picking out the individual elements. I do think the horrors look nice. I think you did a great job with these. I don't see any issue there. Um, the Thousand Suns as well themselves, the Space Marines, um, these guys all, you know, look more or less as they should. That is to say, your traditional sort of blue and gold thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of my main feedback. The vehicles, I think, were the main part that kind of let me down here. Uh, the monsters and the Zangor and stuff like that, I was pretty fine with all of those. Um, the lighting isn't great in these photos, but the vehicles are the thing that jumped out at me. So that would be my feedback for you. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, his counts as converted scratch built Caradron Junk Force Overlords. Yeah, I, I, I know this army. It's great. Uh, general feedback, areas improvement. I color code units for clarity. Um, but try to paint element spaces, graffiti, and weather, and it helped to tie everything together. Yeah, I see no issue with this. I, I love that as a strategy, by the way, color coding units and having slight variation. I think as long, especially with a heavily converted force like this, it's perfectly fine. I think people get too hung up on having colors be consistent across the whole thing. It's about thematic consistency, not color consistency. 
we sort of take color consistency in place of thematic consistency, and those aren't the same things. You can have lots of different colored stuff in an army, and it still feels very coherent. Lots of real militaries have different color uniforms for different troops or slightly different, out, you know, like, uh, outfits is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Um, and they still all look like the same force because they all still have the same sort of theme and, and visual cues and markers, right? And that's what actually ties a force together. Um, I mean, this force is a singular piece of genius, my friend. I, I don't, I'm not going to have much feedback for you here, to be completely honest, because I think it's absolutely fantastic. I've seen this online. It's absolutely one of my favorite things I've seen in the past couple years. Between the graffiti uh, in that particular style, uh, the, the incredible conversions of the uh, Arco and the little halflings leading their, um, their little Arco robots, the nature of the specific um, balloon boys and things like that, I mean, this army is, is just a singular work of staggering genius. I really mean that. Uh, I don't know that I'd have much feedback for you. I mean, honestly, some of the colors could be popped a little more. They, you're very much relying on weathering and stuff like that to do a lot of your work for tonal variation, and that's fine. You could still have a little more contrast in the base color. That's not going to be something you can go back and fix now because we're past the weathering stage. It, it's fine. This is like if you wanted to take this to a, you know, 11 from a 10, okay? I think this is absolutely one of the most brilliant, unique, clever forces I've seen in forever. Your, the, the, the love put into the scratch-built vehicles, the way that they work, the conversions on the individual troops and what they have. I mean, each one of these is absolutely wonderful. Uh, so, uh, Jonathan, I think you should feel nothing but thrilled at this army. Um, other than perhaps the slight color contrast on some of the smaller guys like the Argo dudes setting the initial tones, I literally have no feedback for you. I think this force is a masterpiece. So, yeah. Very, very great work. Okay, next up. Uh, I do not know this. I, I'm not even going to take a shot at that name. Um, <laughs> oh, there you go. I think just call me Arvin. All right, Arvin. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate that, Arvin. You, you know that I have problems pronouncing people's names. I don't want to insult people. Uh, overall, this is my one year and a half uh, of progress painting an army. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so he said one thing he's not quite comfortable yet to try is weathering, which I think I need. Yeah, it, it can be a great thing, especially in Tau, to do, uh, to, to really kind of pop out some elements. I like minor weathering on Tau. I don't like super, super duper beat up Tau, though you can do it. I mean, but Tau have a sort of high tech, yeah, futuristic's the wrong word, but you know what I mean, feel to them. So they feel like they should be a little cleaner, but some minor weathering, some edge chipping. They have some nice forms that really, like they have a lot of angular forms that really do well to sort of edge chipping. So that's kind of one of those things that I, I think works well with them. And when I'm looking over the force, I think you could, we'll kind of go through these here in order in the close-ups. I think it's the thing that could make a little bit of a difference. Just some very minor scratches, hashes, dabs, and dots could, could do a lot of work. Um, but this is a good looking force. I think you did do a good job with the contrast on the red, especially on these shapes. It's, it's minor, but effective. The edges are well picked out. It's clean. These guys look very, you know, sort of anime, which is, I think, what Tau were clearly inspired by. Um, I think you did a great job with these dudes. Uh, overall, I think this force is a lot of fun. I'm not super excited that you decided to stomp on an Imperial Fist, but um, we'll forgive you. Um, these little stealth drones, I think, are, are good. Um, the purple here, though, is where I think we have some of the most opportunity. If we look at these guys compared to the red... These guys are the less visually interesting because they don't have the same sweep of tone uh, and they don't have the same potency of kind of the shadows and the edges and the light variation that your red dudes have. Um, some of that's the design of the models. Like when I look at this guy, he's so much more visually interesting as far as what's going on. Now, part of that's because you've got a little more lights on him and he's doing little minor OSL stuff and things like that. Whereas the purple ends up being a little more flat, this very like, and I, lo I love this purple, by the way, using the purple blue is a great call. It's a really nice color. Uh, but yeah, I think that's where our options are. Now, uh, she looks great. I apologize, I do not remember her name, the special character lady. Um, she looks great. Um, I think she came out well. And again, it's because the edges are stronger, the shadows are stronger, the other light sources and, and sort of popping colors are stronger. So yeah, there you go. Overall, Arvin, um, great force. You should be, again, very proud of this. I think you made a, a really incredible towel force there. All right, Brandon. Uh, his first plunge into Warhammer minis, wanted a scheme involving turquoise and orange, which 
first of all, A-plus choices right there so far. Uh, trying to make an army that didn't look like a blob of one color, but all of a sudden make how they fit together. Yeah. Um, general advice on next steps for improvement would be great. I also tried some things like OSL on the Archon uh, and non-metallic on the sword. So I feel pretty mad about them. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, so the key with this is when you've got this contrast on the individual elements help break it up so it doesn't all feel like it's one color. And as well, having these pop colors. And you've done a good job of that. The turquoise and orange is a good pop color. Um, because you can use purple and a pretty desaturated purple, integrate a lot of very dark colors, you know, make a very deep violet. And then you can have the turquoise and the orange carry a lot of the weight. And I think overall, these guys look very striking on the table. Um, I do feel like we need some more edges here, some more elements picked out, maybe a little more in designs and stuff like that. Some of the, the vehicle doesn't, I think maybe this is the one that's still in progress. I don't know. These guys feel a little unexciting. Um, the, I don't remember what these are called. Homunculuses? Is that what they are? I don't know. I'm probably wrong. Anyways, these dudes feel like they probably, and that's because of the gray skin. When you do this kind of flat gray skin, you really have to work hard in, in a monotone type way to pop it up and make it interesting. The green is a good shot, but it feels kind of messy. We would need the lines to be much sharper, thinner, and cleaner, and then be casting an extremely soft glow, and that's kind of a tough thing to, to do. Um, the vehicles, I think, look absolutely wonderful. This is my favorite vehicle in the bunch. Um, I really do like this. I'd love to see uh, even a little more purple integrated into it. Um, maybe if, like, these little, uh, I don't know, the handrails so this guy doesn't fall out, I assume. Um, if those were purple, I think that would actually go a long way because it would then create a visual line between the stripes you've made. These these little stripes, by the way, are super cool. I, I really like the design you've picked here. Um, these dudes, I think, look good. Your, your basic, I think, Calabite Warriors is these... Uh, the name of these dudes not sure um, these dudes look good we need to sharpen up our edge highlighting our edges are a bit thick and fat so we want to go back in with the base tone you want to push the color up to the edge like you take this black tone and you push right up to the edge and you sharpen your edge highlights that's what you can do if you get some fat original edge highlights it's it's not a problem it happens to all of us so that's why you just take that original tone and push 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 against it until you get a nice sharp edge uh, yeah, overall, um, I think it's a cool looking force. I think the non-metallic metal, by the way, is fine. It just needs smooth to keep pushing. Like that's how you learn. You try, you fail a little, but you get partially there and then you do it again. Um, you know, like that's, that's, I, I think this is a really nice striking thing. I think it's great for character models, especially with power swords. So I say, keep pushing, man. You're, you're not that far off. You just need to smooth it down some. I think it's a nice looking base. So there you go. Okay, next up, Jasper. Uh, counts as an army, just over a thousand points of trolls. Um, yeah, sure. It's fine, that certainly counts. Specific question, you previously mentioned to add a greater variety of color tones into the troll skin as they were looking too flat. In the more recent ones, I've glazed in purples in the shadows, but I don't think that is taking it far enough. I'm thinking of glazing pinks, flesh tones to the underside of the skin areas, and glazing desaturated greens to the top of the skin sections. Are these the correct steps to liven up the trolls? I think that something like that could go a long way. Yes, I think that's exactly kind of what you want to do. Now, green as your high color might be rough. Might be better to integrate some of the pink into the low tone, flesh tones into the high tones. And then you could have greens kind of slightly off highlights in the upper areas. Don't don't glaze right over the top. Make it kind of, if this is the highest highlight, then put it to the sides. So for example, in Mr. Troll Belly here, the lower areas might have the pink tones and stuff like that glazed into it. And then on the sides here, we'd have greens, but leave this kind of in that gray. So the highest highlights are still reading as the ambient light color. Because if you, if you turn that green, it's going to feel like he's under a green light because that pure light reflects white. Right? There's my there's my hand under a very bright light that's just off camera. Okay. Um, but I agree with that. That is where I would push it. Um, that's absolutely where I would go. I mean, this is a super cool force. I like how you have all these different little uh, guys in here. Yeah, we just need more tonal variation to pop up and create more visual interest. And when we're using color, we need to make sure that color has that contrast and stuff to it. So, for example, our sort of half trolls here that are coming up out of the ground which is a neat effect. We want to make sure that they have these, like the green parts, their shoulders have a lot of contrast to them because that can be an area of extreme visual interest. So there you go. Okay, next up, Raphael. Um, you may remember my black tank from months ago. I asked about painting checkers. Here's the Horus Heresy Dark Angels army I painted since then. Um, so the plasma weapons, I chose orange because it complements the blue-black armor. That's fine. Doesn't I, I never am bothered by other color plasma weapons. You can paint a plasma weapon whatever you want. It just it's about the it's about having the extreme highlight and making it look like plasma. It's not about the color. You can do it pink, orange, green, purple, blue. It's irrelevant. Um, okay. Um, some of them are quite happy. Second point on the black of the marine armors. On some of them, I'm quite happy. On some others, it feels very dark blue-gray. 
um, use advice in the next batch of having trouble going from black to white or even light gray on such small surfaces. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. Um, you know, you have to kind of pick a point and say, like, yep, that's good enough. Because otherwise you're just going to lose, you, you get kind of lost. And you do end up here with a very blue-gray, and it's because too much of the armor is not black. That's what's happening. So we got to remember the 50% rule. If you want something to read as a color, 50% of it has to be that color. And here we've got too much, too much still too saturated blue. Some glazes of black over the top or like a Payne's gray ink would bring it back together. Okay. Um, now, that being said, I really like the vehicle. I think that looks really nice. That's working well for me, um, you know, because of the, the element we talked about here. The uh, hazard stripe tanks here look nice. The rush streaking looks good. Um, we are ending up with a very blue tone armor. If that's what you're going for, fine. I don't know if that's the appropriate color or not. I'm not sure what the, the color tone is for these guys. Um, but those do, those dudes do appear more blue. The dreadnoughts, the bigger guys here, they feel like more like they're black with some slight highlights. But again, if you need, if you go too far, it's okay to bring it back together. You just glaze in like with an airbrush, some Payne's gray ink over that area. Um, I like the red pops here. I think that looks nice. The actual steel metals need a little more visual interest. They're still a little boring. So that's what I would work on. Okay. Uh, overall, very, very cool force. Um, something, again, I, I say this many times because anytime you have a finished army, you should be really proud. And this looks good. Like, this would be something you should be proud to have on the tabletop. It's very striking. It's a nice scheme. Don't get hung up on some individual models, maybe having a little too much of one color or another. It's okay. Like, you look at this shot. This is a coherent army. This sells. It looks like a force. It looks like it belongs together. You've done it. So, great work. All right, next up, Lee. This is an army in my head for two years, a sort of Vietnam-themed army of Katachin. Uh, used a very limited green palette to paint the minis and basing, which I use plastic plants. This army is my 2021 project, and I have so many ideas for it. Sure, to keep expanding it, I assume. Uh, yeah, these guys look really good, man. All the, the vine coverings and stuff look nice. Good contrast on the little plastic plants that you're using on the base. They don't feel like they're fake or anything. They feel like they're part of it. Uh, really good integration of the patterns. These guys feel very naturey. I like how you've picked just some specific colors to pop out. And that's really important when you're using a, a very like camoed, meant to be coherent scheme, right? Like these guys are meant to be green and blending on the forest. So you can't have bright poppy colors too much that aren't green, but they're also still models and an artistic expression and they need to read on the table. So I like how you've integrated the silver, especially the red. I like the little touches of red and stuff in there. I think those work really well to create some distinction. You can also um, keep pushing a little bit more of the weathering on some places. Um, on the big dreadnought, the tanks, I think it looks nice. Um, overall, these guys look good. Like this, this vehicle looks uh, solid. I really like the way you kind of did the rusting and, and uh, dabbing of the weathering here, especially on the areas where it feels like things would be normally scratched and dented. Uh, like here on this, this looks really solid. I enjoy that. I mean, it's great use of sort of sponge weathering type stuff and those kinds of things. Uh, the ogrins here are pretty fun. I enjoy that. Um, of course, I do love that multiple people have surfboards. Yes, I get the reference. Yes, it's wonderful. Yes, this guy's great and good stuff. Uh, so the... Uh, but overall, I think this is really good, man. I think this is a really fun force. One thing you may want to think about is the integration of a little mud into things like the tire tracks and on feet and on the feet of some of the troops. If you're walking through a jungle, jungles are often very wet, very muddy ground. Um, so you can, you know, you could have, uh, especially if you're talking about more of a tropical type of setting. Uh, and so um, where it's just often very humid. And so, you know, you can have a little bit of that coming up onto the tracks or onto the feet and stuff like that. And I think that'll really sell. So there you go. Okay, uh, let's see. Peter, uh, about a year ago, I made the decision to paint an army with non-metallic metal gold. It turned out to be a bit of a painful one. I'm just looking for general feedback on the army, please. Sure. So, yeah, choosing to paint an army in non-metallic is very punishing. Um, it will make you better. That's what I'll say. Like, you will work through it. Um, you'll, you'll learn a lot as you go through. Looking at the non-metallic, it's really tough because to make it sell, you have to spend time smoothing everything out. And that's really the number one thing I notice here. You're running all the contrast, but a lot of the blends aren't quite as smooth as they could be. Um, so that's kind of what's jumping out at me on, on some of these troops. I think it's a good looking force. Uh, like at a distance, which is how you're going to normally view these from an army level, I think it's fine non-metallic metal. 
Um, that is to say, when you look at them on the table, you're not looking at the fig. You know, you're not looking at it close up, right? You're not looking at it like this, where you can see the blends. You're looking at it like this, out here or on the table or far away. And it's actually going to do the work there. It's kind of like a pointillism effect. So I think at a distance it sells. I wouldn't beat yourself up over it too much at all. Um, I do think if you're looking to improve things, that's what I would do. I would go back in and smooth things out. Also, be careful with some of your edge highlights, like in the blue. A couple on these guys are a little fat. So, but very cool force. And I appreciate the, the, the going for it. Okay. Uh, Chris, a military orders army I've been painting. First project, I've tried to really push myself uh, as possible to a display standard, trying to do reflective black armor on all the models as well as minor freehand. Looking for ways to improve basing going forward. That seems to be area I'm not sure how to uh, improve in. Sure. Yeah, the basing looks pretty boring. And what we need to do is stop laying down that crackle paint just on top of the base. Build something up, put down some other texture, and make the crackle paint then part of it. Um, this is something I do a lot where I integrate it in. If you go back and look at the 24-hour uh, ogre army I painted, you'll see their bases. You can see how I integrated in the crackle paint. Same with, uh, I think, the I think I did the same thing with like the FEC force that I did very recently um, for a video. And so you want to mix that in, and then also have like maybe some tufts, some skulls, some plants, some discarded whatever, like little rocks, little stones. You know, you just need to think nature and, and everything that could be there. Now, as far as the reflective armor, um, it works on some of the characters where it's clear you spend a lot more time. Um, some of them do look a little flat. Some of the pictures are fuzzy, so it's kind of hard to, to read exactly. We've got a very shallow depth of focus here. I think some of these dudes work better than others. Um, you know, if you're going to do it, I would keep pushing it all throughout. Not just, Like, you have the highest highs being brightest, which is good, but I would still push some edges or light catches or something like that down to the lower areas. You don't need to run the same full volumes, but there still has to be, like, light is still filtering down there. It's not going to be completely in shadow. But overall, neat stuff. Hope that helped. Okay. John Prince, uh, painting a Soulblight Gravelord's army. Uh, the last piece of feedback I received from you was on your photos, lighting, and non-metallic metals. So I like to know if I'm moving in the right direction with the NMM. Uh, if the photos are good enough to give proper feedback on. Uh, sure. So, um, overall, this is a heck of a... That's a heck of a pack of zombies. Um, yeah, cool stuff. We're gonna, we're, I'm going to kind of jump... Uh, through them to just look at the other forces. Uh, because, I mean, the, the pack of zombies work. The they, they look... A lot of these zombies look pretty rough. And I would add in a little more color. They almost feel like they're they're black and white, which I don't, maybe that's what you're going for. I don't know. Maybe they're meant to look like zombies out of a black and white movie, but then it's strange that you have color. The the other big things here I can give some more detailed feedback on. Like the... the This purple is good to work near the wings. It needs to smooth out. We don't... We can't have this hard line. So you want to, again, glaze over top of each other, especially on these big models, and bring them back and forth. I have a very old video, but that still is completely true on how to paint detailed wings uh, and textured wings. Uh, and I would go check that out because I talk about glazing in those colors into the, the lines there. Um, with this kind of stuff, with the ghosty effects, I would continue to push the contrast up. We need a little bit more white to really sell that they're ghosts, so you have to bring it up into a, a very spectral color, which normally means very desaturated, high-tint uh, whites. Uh, that kind of thing. I think the stonework looks nice, the vampire cell for me, so it's mainly just the ghost part. Um, as to the non-metallic metal, we're still a little rough, and we're still kind of not completely selling it, but yes, there is improvement. So now we need to look at things like bounce lights, and what that means is here's your primary reflection, but there's no secondary reflection down here. Light would bounce off the ground and reflect here. We've got to bring out the size of the highlight and smooth out the transition into the darker color. I mean, non-metallic's a really complicated effect to sell. It just is. So, you know, if you're going to go for it, you it's, it can be really challenging. Um, cool conversion, by the way, for your Vampire Lord on uh, Zombie Dragon. Um, yeah, overall, I think the non-metallic, your main point is we need to, you know, work on smoothing out those lights. Something like this little, the little Zwiehander sword or whatever, <coughs> excuse me, that one works the best for me right now. Um, just because it, the way you happen to place the highlights here actually really sells and it has nice edges. So that kind of thing you want to, you know, it still needs a little smoothing, but it's, it's working for me. Um, some of these other ones, it doesn't quite feel like we, we have the same space. If you go back and watch my recent video on how to paint non-metallic swords, I think that'll really give you the extra tips that you need to get uh, moving along. But uh, overall, uh, very cool force, man. I like the Necromancer. It's a nice big force. Go, uh, go, 
go lord over people with these soul blight man it's fantastic you're gonna have a lot of fun with this army that's for sure okay next up uh sylvaneth uh so just one photo but yeah really good looking force uh i like this this looks nice um got the big kernoff pack alario looks nice raised up like that i really like how you built that up with the uh the pillars and and sort of the the background cave um, i'm obviously that's very similar to what i did and i enjoy that really love her wings it's very striking she stands out absolutely as the centerpiece the but everything feels very coherent uh overall man this is uh really nice work so yeah good stuff i enjoy this one i'm not sure what feedback i'd give you the picture's a little far away for me to really get in and give some individual feedback so i'll just say it looks great well done Okay, Joshua, um, AOS, the start of the pandemic, uh, really want to make KO to feel like they're made of, uh, metal and heavy as most armies I see don't. I'd love to know if I've gotten in the ballpark. I just also wanted to have ships to have a sense of speed and not just floating above the battlefield. Sure. So, I mean, I think the metals, if your if your question is, did you treat the metals here? Well, I think the answer is yes. For the most part, you've, you've done a nice job of, um, really making them feel distinct and picking out the individual elements uh, and making them feel bright while also having color pops. So I think that all works for me. When it comes to heavy, I don't know what that means. Like, a lot of these guys don't really com talk about heaviness because they, you know, they're floaty guys, so it's hard to communicate that. Now, as far as the movement on the ships, yes, I think you accomplish that. Things, things like tilting them in the, in the, you know, so they look like they're actually going in some direction. I think that's absolutely working for me. I have no issues there. The color scheme here is great across the army. I love the the um, purple, the patinaed bronze, the the pink as your pop color. I think these are excellent choices. Um, so having them more forward moving, climbing or or, or descending, uh, I think absolutely works. Uh, and the pink glow effect really does sell. I mean, you're doing a lot of that with an airbrush, but it's still absolutely working for me. I have no issue with it. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, I think pop-wise, my, probably my only concern is maybe the green is a bit off-putting. The little shots you have out of the front of the fluorescent green, I'm not sure that sells for me. And the reason is because it's the only example of it, and it's kind of one color too many in some of these cases. It's really bright, it's really fluorescent, it's really eye-catching, and I can't see anything else. This unit would honestly, I think, be a lot stronger without those green explosion tips, is my honest answer. Um, because they're so distracting from the rest of your color scheme because they're the only thing I can see. Like, when I soften my eyes, the only thing I see is those green tips. That's it, right? Whereas, like, even on this big shot, they're so noticeable. Um, so that, I mean, you're, you're into it now. Uh, it's fine. It's not like it ruins the army or anything, right? Like, it's a beautiful-looking force. You did a great job. The snow, by the way, I didn't comment on it, but your snow bases look really, really wonderful, so... Uh, a plus work there that really feels like naturalistic snow and i see a lot of bad snow bases yours look fantastic so well done there my it's just that's probably the only real flaw that i notice so but that's okay it's still a fantastic looking force it does feel great i really like what you came with there okay next up franklin back into painting last october uh started conventional base coat layer highlight approach i've tried out volumetric highlighting with the Lieutenant Ancient Guy, along with True Metallic Metal Shading. Um, sure, any advantage how to push the characters to the next level. Yeah, I mean, I think what we need, keep pushing the volumetric, so, like, looking at it, this, these guys, these look so much better than these guys. Like, it's just not even close, right? So, I think continuing to push and explore this is where you need to go. I think overall, you, you are, I can see the definite progress as you're going through in those guys and experimenting. These dudes are looking good. Keep pushing that is my best advice. It's really at this point just repetition. I think the color looks nice. The deep blue with the sort of bronzy, coppery color uh, is a great pull. So I like that. Um, yeah, the, the bases are a little boring. So again, you may want to think about integrating the same stuff I mentioned earlier with the red crackle bases. You know, integrate in some other rocks and things like that or build it up first and then put the crackle paint on top so you have different varying heights and rocks and textures that the crackle paint's laying over um that kind of stuff uh but yeah overall absolutely fantastic looking force coming along keep pushing it with the volumetric those look so much stronger than the other guys i can't even it's, it's just not even close so yeah um i think as far as the characters go you could push the volumetric highlighting even a little farther keep pushing the contrast but honestly my advice would be 
just work on that, and I think you're in the right direction. Okay, Edwin. Lockdown Army of Lumineth Realm Lords. Uh, would it get my attention during a painting competition? That's a that's a tough question. Um, so let's take a look. So my answer is, uh, given a lot of the armies I, I've judged, it looks nice. It wouldn't you wouldn't win anything. That's I like it's my simplest answer I can give you, and the reason is because the the general contrast smoothness and and uh, elements here aren't picked out strong enough. So, like, the contrast on the black is too low, the red is too low, the, uh, like, there's, there are really good elements in here that I like. Things like the banner look really nice, um, you know, some of your, like, the basing is, is interesting and varied, um, so it's, you know, your weapons look interesting. It's not that it's bad, it's just you, it probably wouldn't make the cut, and that's mainly because some of the elements here, oops, sorry need to be picked out and pushed a little more. Um, the reds especially are what I'm seeing as your big area of opportunity for improvement. Uh, but these guys, like your, your sentinels, again, so much of them is in the black and so much of the black is quite flat. Um, so having that kind of stuff, I like the little scratches and, and dashes. I, I enjoy discovering that. But things like these little banners on the back, like the sides clearly have a different material. Why aren't that, why isn't that picked out in a different color? or something like that to separate it. Why don't I have more variation in the reds, right? That's where I'm really noticing the issue. Um, same with the yellows, like I, the yellow feels like it's, it doesn't feel like gold, it just feels like yellow. I'm not sure what it's going for. And that would be a problem for me. If I can't read what the material is supposed to be or what the, your artist intention was, that's a challenge, right? Don't get me wrong, this is a good force. You're going in the right direction. There's a lot of things I like. Like, I like the variation in the horse's skin tone. I like what you're going for in the weapons. But we have to continue pushing a lot of sort of the contrast up and things like that. Um, check out Martin Orlando's work and his uh, Lumineth. I think they're probably some of the best Lumineth around. Uh, maybe the best Lumineth army I've seen. And that will give you some ideas on how to push that contrast up. All right, uh, Yo Kim, uh, never really painted anything in my life, but about six months ago, decided to give AOS a try. Uh, awesome, welcome. Uh, he said, I, I've painted two armies, one Alarith and one Venari, which I'm gonna plan to play as Lumnia, sure. Uh, simple color scheme, because I wanted to get models done. Mostly for suggestions on how to make my hero stand out more, we just focus on improving the need to spend hours every week. Sure, so welcome to painting, it's great. I'm so glad, it is super good for your mental health. Love the two forces, having the different color things. Again, it can still work. You have a, you have a singular base color. The, what you're going to need to do on your characters is, again, just pick out more of those details. So when they come in, rely less on your kind of overall color scheme and more on the individual elements. Like having them have slightly different pop colors, having the details jump out in different ways, having more contrast run, going back in and spending more time doing volumetric highlighting on the characters, things like that. Like here's our... our uh, lore seeker guy like with this dude he doesn't really stand out and he should so let's work on like adding more contrast to the red or making the blue stand out a little more with a little more silver highlights catching the edges having the cream colored armor have a little bit more clearly defined white light catches you know stuff like that you're but you are doing a good job of like really going in and paying attention to the detail picking everything out which is fantastic i see a lot of people not do that uh but i think you did a good job with this for just starting out this is really good work with the big stone mountains, I see a lot of opportunity for for improvement here. Um, do go watch my video on realistic snow basing. Um, that's going to help say that it looks more like snow and not like they're kind of standing on powdered sugar. Um, but yeah, that's that's my general feeling. Overall, cool stuff. I hope I gave you some ideas for your characters there. All right, next up, Matthew Rowland. Uh, we ended up going, so started painting six months just before COVID and really threw myself in. Any feedback would be appreciated. Sure. So here's another fun Thousand Suns Force. Yeah, for just starting out, I think this is a great looking army. My main feedback to you is going to obviously be the thing that all new painters need to work on, which is contrast, right? You're doing a great job keeping everything very clean in your application of paint, which I think is really important. When new painters start out, they often have a very messy paint style and they're not separating their elements correctly. And I think for the most part, you're doing a better job of that. Now we need to work on adding in contrast, so adding in additional colors and tones, especially on things like the golds and the metals. 
Um, so watch my video on highlighting uh, true metallic metal. I like the effect you achieved here um, with the airbrush on the Helldrake. I think that looks really nice. Um, on the wings there, I think that's cool. So I think that's a nice eye-catching detail that I enjoy. My best advice for you is, yeah, just continue to push up the contrast, look into like volumetric highlighting and how to establish those. And I think that's where you go for your next step. But overall, for just starting out, you're doing an absolutely great job and it's a wonderful looking force. All right, next up, Florian. Uh, so uh, this is his big sister's army and he's explaining that there's a lot of different sort of color elements and stuff like that. Yes, okay. So, um, overall, really fantastic looking force. I like the different sort of slightly different color schemes going throughout, picking out the individual units. Again, I've talked about how theme, not color, is what draws an army together. Um, and they do look like they're part of the Ecclesiarchy, Ecclesiastes. I don't know what the proper term is there. Um, but, be, and, and I like that you've separated the different sort of squads in that way. Um, the, I, I like all the different pinks. Um, the, the tank looks nice. Some of the highlighting on the tank is kind of nonsensical. Um, what I mean by that is you're clearly using the airbrush to establish these different like volumetric colors. Some of it doesn't really feel like it makes sense exactly what's going on, given the other highlights that are around it. So you kind of have to pick a direction. It's either all toward the bottom, all in the middle, or all toward the top or something like that. Um, it kind of varies a little more than I would want. Uh, but... Overall, the the force looks really nice. I like the couple real standouts that are something very different, right? And they're meant to be like the assassin or the you know, these dudes right here that clearly look like they're very different. It's it's a great imperial force that really shows that it's got a lot of different characters from across the imperium coming together, joining you know going on crusade with the sisters. So I think this is really really great work. Um, I love it. It's it completely sells for me. Um, yeah, I I dig it, man. It's great. You know, certainly there are elements we could push, like we could draw some tones together a little more. We could push some contrast up a little higher, of course. Um, but overall, I think this is a smashing success. Great looking army. All right, finally, Rich, uh, some pictures of Blood Ravens. There's a couple of pre-painted Gladiator because I'm really happy with the conversion stuff. First army, all the models I painted are in this army. Wow, well, that's super cool. Well, again, welcome. Um, for your first force, uh, I think this is nice looking. Um, I think it, you're very dirty, very weathered, um, which is, I think, a lot of people's instinct when they first start out because it's kind of easier to paint weathered. But at the same time, I think for the most part, you've done a good job of separating the elements. Now, where I saw opportunity is in stuff like your squad here. So if we go back and look at these picture of this character, I've got a lot of the individual elements picked out. Yes, they're rusty crusty, but that's okay. I can still see what's going on. When I look over here, you know, again, with the tank, I've got all the different elements picked out. Same with the dread. When I get into this unit, I've got things like belts and packs and stuff like that. Their little buttons and stuff on their armor, their gun. that really feels way too dark and, and like it doesn't have enough detail. And that's really what jumped out at me. <coughs> I understand the sort of grim, dark nature of the force, and that's cool. I have no problem with that. You still want to make sure that there's some more variation in the elements. The biggest things that jumped out at me here that could use more contrast are really the skin and picking out the individual elements of the models so they feel like there's a little more separation. When everything gets too grim and dark, it kind of all just looks muddy. So I'd work on popping out those individual things. Now, I did want to spend one quick moment on this. Don't do this. <laughs> okay. So I get what you're going for. It's cool to have the tall grasses that the snipers are peering through, but grass doesn't grow with two massive shoots just sitting up in the ground, and then everything around it is up to his knees. If you're going to use these, they have to have color. You have to paint them. So you actually need to do the base separately and either use an airbrush or some very gentle glazes to put color into them and then sort of dry brush across them to drag and create light because otherwise they just look so fake. And then you also have to make sure that they basically take up the whole area. He needs to be in tall grasses. Like he's walking through something that is universally that tall. You don't walk through a field and then suddenly have just like two shoots of grass that are eight feet tall, right? Which is how tall those are, given he's a huge space marine. And then everything else is like a foot tall. It's just not how, how nature works, right? And between the sort of texture of them and then the nature of their placement, it just it just immediately jumps out of fake. But I get the instinct because it's so cool to have a sniper like peering out from the grasses. Like, that's super cool, right? You can get there. You just have to take those extra steps. 
So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end. Very cool. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you want to join us on your journey, the link is down below. Don't forget, you have to answer all three questions. Otherwise, you do not get approved. No exceptions. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Remember, it's all of you who are providing feedback every month when people ask questions. Be positive. Help people out. Offer advice. Offer constructive criticism when asked. I really pride myself that this is such a positive community. It's very rare that I have to step in in any kind of administrative way, and that's because all of you are so awesome. I love everybody who has the, the, the guts to submit. It takes a lot of guts to submit and, and expose yourself to feedback, and I love that I get to do this every month. So thank you all so much. Um, look at next month's, of course, will already be up. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody's submissions for next month. So thank you all so much. Everybody have a great, great summertime. And as always, we'll see you next time.